Live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Spark Summit East 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is theCUBE, and we're here live at Spark Summit East, hashtag Spark Summit. Zia Ma is here. She's the Vice President of Big Data at Intel. Zia, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So, software is our topic. Software at Intel. You know, people don't necessarily associate Intel always with software, but what's the story there? Um, so actually there are many things that we do uh, for software. Uh, since I manage the big data uh, engineering organization, so I'll just say a little bit more about uh, what do we do for big data. Great. Um, so, you know, Intel do all the processors, all the hardware, uh, but when our customers are using the hardware, they like to get the best performance out of the Intel software, uh, Intel hardware. So this is for the big data space. We optimize the big data solution stack, uh, including like Spark and Hadoop on top of uh, Intel hardware and make sure that we leverage the latest instruction set so that the customer gets the most uh, uh, performance out of the, the newest uh, released uh, Intel hardware. And also we collaborate very extensively with uh, uh, the open source community, community for uh, a big data ecosystem advancement. So for example, we're a leading uh, contributor to Apache Spark uh, uh, ecosystem. We're also a top contributor to Apache Hadoop ecosystem. And lately we're getting into the, uh, the, the, the machine learning and deep learning and uh, the AI space, especially integrating those capabilities into the big data ecosystem. So I have to ask you a question, just sort of strategically, if, if we go back several years, you look at, during the Unix days, you had a number of players developing uh, hardware, microprocessors, there, was, there were risk-based systems, and remember MIPS, and of course, you know, IBM had one, and Sun, et cetera, et cetera, and some of those still live on, but very, very small portion of the market. So Intel has dominated the, the general purpose market. So as big data then became more mainstream, was there a discussion of, okay, we have to develop specialized processors, which I know Intel can do as well, or did you say, okay, we can actually optimize through software? Was that how you got here, or am I understanding that? Or? Yeah, we believe uh, uh, definitely, you know, software optimization, optimizing through software is one thing that we do. That's why Intel actually have, you may not know this, Intel has one of the largest software divisions uh, that focus on the enabling and optimizing uh, the solutions on Intel hardware. And of course, we also have very aggressive uh, product roadmap for advancing continuously our hardware products. Mm -hmm. And actually, you mentioned a general purpose uh, computing. A CPU today in the big data market still has uh, more than 95% of the market. So, right. you know, that's uh, still the, the, the biggest portion of the big data uh, market. Um, and we'll continue our advancement in that area. And obviously, as the, the AI and you know, machine learning, deep learning use cases getting added into the big data uh, domain, and uh, we are you know, uh, expanding our uh, product portfolio uh, into uh, uh, some other silicon products. Yeah, and of course, I mean, that was kind of the big bet of Hadoop. We want to bet on Intel, and, uh, and I guess, I you guess. You should still do. Yeah, and still do, <laughs> and, and, and I guess at the time, you know, Seagate or other spinning disk, now mm -hmm. Flash comes in, of course now Spark with, with memory, it's really changing the game, isn't it? What does that mean for you and the software group? Right, so what do we, um, Actually, you know, still we focus on the the um, uh, the the, the optimize. Obviously, at the hardware level, like Intel now is not just offering uh, the computing uh, capability. We also offer uh, very powerful network capability. We offer uh, very good uh, memory uh, solutions, memory uh, hardware. Like we keep talking about this non-volatile memory technologies. Mm. So for big data, we're trying to leverage all those newest uh, hardware. And we are already working with many of our customers uh, to uh, help them to improve uh, their uh, big data memory solution, the, 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 the in-memory analytics type of capability on Intel hardware, give them the most optimal performance and the most secure uh, uh, result. Uh, using Intel hardware. So that's definitely one thing that we uh, continue to do that's going to be our uh, still a uh, top priority. But we don't just limit our work to optimization because 
giving user the best experience, giving user the complete experience on Intel platform is our ultimate goal. So we work with our customers from financial services company, we work with uh, folks from manufacturing, uh, from um, uh, transportation, and from other IoT, you know, Internet of Things segment, and to make sure that we give them the easiest uh, big data and the analytics uh, experience on Intel hardware. So, so when they are running those solutions, they don't have to worry too much about how to make their application work with Intel hardware and how to make it more performant with Intel hardware because that's the Intel software solution that's going to bridge the gap. We, make, we do that part of the job and so that it, it will make uh, our customers' experience easier. Um, and uh, more complete. You serve as the accelerant to the marketplace. So go ahead, George. That's right. So, um, the uh, Intel's big ML is a sort of the news product as of a, you know the last month or so, open source solution. Tell us how um, there are other sort of deep learning frameworks that aren't as that aren't fully integrated with Spark yet, and where big ML fits in since we're at a Spark conference, how it backfills some functionality and how it really takes advantage of Intel hardware. Yeah, so, uh, yes, uh, George, just like you said, big deal, we just did open source it a month ago. It's a, a deep learning framework uh, that uh, we organically build on top of Apache Spark. Um, and it has uh, quite some differences from the other uh, mainstream deep learning frameworks like a Cafe, TensorFlow, Torch, and Tiano, or uh, you know, you name it. Um, the reason that we decided to work on this project was again through our experience working with our uh, analytics, especially big data analytics customers, uh, as they build their AI solutions or AI modules within their analytics application. Um, it they found it's getting more and more difficult um, to. Uh, to integrate AI, to build and integrate AI capability into their existing uh, the big data and analytics ecosystem. They had to set up a different cluster and uh, build a different set of uh, 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 AI capabilities using, let's say, one of the, the, the deep learning frameworks. And then later, they have to overcome a lot of challenges to, for example, moving the model and data between the two different clusters and then make sure that AI result is getting uh, integrated into the existing analytics uh, platform or analytics application. So that was the, the primary driver. How do we make our customers' experience easier? Uh, do they have to uh, leave their existing infrastructure and build a separate AI module? And can we do something organic on top of the existing big data platform, let's say Apache Spark. Can we just do something like that so that the user can just leverage its existing infrastructure and, and make it a naturally integral part of the overall uh, the analytics uh, 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 ecosystem that they already have. So this was the, the primary uh, driver. And also the other benefit that we see by integrating this big DL framework naturally with the big data platform is that it enables efficient scale out uh, and fault tolerance and elasticity and dynamic resource management. And those are the benefits that's all naturally brought by big data platform. And today, actually just with uh, you know, a very short period of time, and we have already tested that big DL can scale easily to tens or hundreds of nodes. Uh, so the scalability is also quite good. And, uh, Another benefit with a, a solution like Big, Big DL, especially uh, because it eliminates the need of setting up a separate cluster and moving the model between different hardware clusters, you save your total cost of ownership. You can just leverage your existing in infrastructure. There is no need to buy additional set of hardware and, and build another environment just for training the model. Uh, so that's another benefit that we see. And performance-wise, um, again, you know, uh, we also tested uh, a big deal uh, with uh, 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 Cafe Torch and uh, uh, TensorFlow. Uh, so the performance of big deal on single-node Xeon 
is orders of magnitude faster than out of box uh, open source cafe, TensorFlow, or Torch. So it definitely, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's going to be a very promising Without and a useful heavy lifting, solution. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you talk about some of the use cases that you expect to see from your your partners and your customers? Actually, very good question. You know, we already started uh, a few engagement with some of the interested uh, customers. Uh, the first customer is from steel industry. Uh, you know, we are improving the accuracy for steel surface defect recognition is very important to its quality control. Uh, so we worked with this customer in the last few months uh, and build an end-to-end image recognition pipeline using Big DL and Spark. And the customer, just through phase one work, already improved uh, its defect recognition uh, accuracy to 90%. And uh, they are seeing a very good yield uh, improvement with the steel production. And it used to be done by, by human? It used inspection? to be done by human, yes. And you said, well, I'm sorry, what was the degree of improvement? Uh, 90, 90. Zero. So now the accuracy is up to 90%. And another use case, and financial services actually is another use case, especially for fraud detection. Mm -hmm. So this customer that, again, you know, uh, I'm not uh, you know, at the customer's request. You know, they're very sensitive to the financial industry. They're very sensitive with releasing their name. So the customer was seeing its fraud risks were increasing tremendously with its wide range of products, services, and customer interaction channels. So uh, they implemented an end-to-end deep learning uh, solution using Big DL and uh, Spark. And again, through phase one work, they are seeing uh, the, def uh, the fraud detection rate improved by 40 times, 40 times, through phase one work. We think there are more improvement that we can do because this is just the collaboration in the last few months, and we'll continue the collaboration with this customer. And we expect more use cases from other business segments, but those are the two that's already have big deal running in production today. Well, so the first is, I mean, that's amazing. You know, re essentially replacing the human have to interact and, and be much more accurate. The fraud detection is, is interesting because fraud detection has come a long way in the last 10 years, as you know. It used to take six months if they found you know, fraud, and, and now it's you know, minutes, seconds, you know, but there are a lot of false positives still. So do you see this technology helping address that problem? Yeah, we actually def continuously improving the prediction accuracy is one of the, the goals. And uh, we expect, you know, to, that's why we, this is another reason why we need to bring AI and big data together. Because you need to train your model, you need to train your AI capabilities with more and more training data so that you get much improved training, perform, uh, training accuracy. Actually, this is the, 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 the biggest way of improving your training accuracy. So, and you need a huge infrastructure, a big data platform, so that you can host and well manage your training data sets, and so that it can feed into your deep learning uh, solution or module for m continuously improving your training accuracy. Mm -hmm. So, yes. This is a really key point, it seems like. I would like to unpack that a little bit. So. Because um, when, when we talk to customers and um, application vendors, it's that training feedback loop that gets the model smarter and smarter. So if you had one cluster for training that was with another framework, and then Spark was your, um, I guess your, your, for the rest of your analytics, um, how would training with feedback data work when you had two separate you know, environments? You know, that, that's one of the drivers why we are creating Big DL, because we, you know, we tried to port. Uh, in the, we did not come to Big DL uh, at the very beginning. We actually tried to port the existing deep learning frameworks like Cafe and TensorFlow onto Spark. And you also probably saw some research papers. Folks, there are other teams that's out there that's also trying to port Cafe, TensorFlow, and other deep learning frameworks that's out there onto Spark because the, you have that need. You need to bring the two capabilities together. But the problem is that those systems were developed in a very in a 
traditional way. You know, it, it, with big data um, uh, not yet in the consideration when those, when those frameworks were created, were innovated. So, but now the need of converging the two becomes more and more clear and more necessary. And that's why we said, and we, when we poured it over, we said, gosh, this is so difficult. First, it's, it's very challenging to, to integrate the two. And second, the experience, after you moved it over, it's awkward, you are literally using Spark as a dispatcher. The integration is not coherent. It's like they are superficially integrated. Um, so this is where we said, okay, we got to do something different. We cannot just superficially integrate two systems together. Can we do something organic on top of the big data platform, on top of Apache Spark, so that the integration between the training system, between feature engineering, between data management, can be more consistent, can be more integrated. So that was the, that, that's exactly the driver for, for this work. Well, that, that's huge. I mean, seamless integration is one of the most overused phrases in the technology yeah. business. Superficial integration is maybe a better description for a lot of those so-called seamless integrations. You're claiming here that it's, it's seamless integration. Um, we're out of time, but just um, last word on Intel and Spark Summit. What do you guys got going here? What's the vibe like? So, um, actually tomorrow I have a, a keynote. I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about what we're doing with Big DL. Actually, this is one of the big uh, things that we're doing. And of course, in order for Big DL, system like you know, Big DL, or even other uh, deep learning frameworks, to get optimized, optimum performance on Intel hardware, that's, there is another item that we're highlighting at MKL, at Intel Optimized Math Kernel Library. It has a lot of uh, uh, common math routines that's optimized for Intel processor using the latest instruction set, and that's already today integrated into the big DL uh, 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 platform uh, ecosystem. So that's another thing that we're highlighting. And um, another thing is that those are just the software. And at the hardware level, during November, Intel's AI Day, our executives from BK, Diane Bryant, and Doug Fisher, they also highlight um, the Nirvana product portfolio that's coming out that will give you different hardware choices for AI. Uh, you can look at FPGA, Xeon Phi, Xeon, and uh, our uh, new Nirvana-based silicon like Christ Lake. And uh, you know, those are um, some good silicon products that you can expect awesome. in the future. Intel, taking us to Nirvana, touching every, <laughs> part of the, every part of the ecosystem. Intel's, like you say, 95% share and, uh, in all parts of the, the business. Sia, yeah, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. Thank you, Great thank you for you. having welcome. me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. George and I will be back with our next guest. This is Spark Summit, hashtag Spark Summit. We're theCUBE, we're right back. Since the dawn of the